Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, if you guys are getting a sense of deja vu, uh, we passed this out of this committee uh, last legislative session, and it uh, passed out on the Senate floor and um, was stalled over in the House, but uh, we're pretty confident we can get all the way through this time around, so I appreciate your support in the past. Um, I'm uh, This time around, uh, the okay. bill number is a little bit different, and there's a couple provisions that are slightly different, but it's pretty much the same bill as we had last session at Senate Bill 84. Um, I'm honored to support it this time as Senate Bill 163, along with 13 of my fellow co-sponsors. Uh, um, and if uh, successfully passed into law, this legislation would allow citizens of Michigan to choose a Choose Life license plate. This plate would cost citizens who choose the design $35 in addition to their vehicle registration fees. $25 of this fee would go towards eligible nonprofit organizations and projects, while $10 would cover the cost of the plate. Uh, per the text of the legislation, eligible nonprofit organizations include those which provide crisis pregnancy centers, home for pregnant women, and other organizations that provide practical support for at-risk populations and promote life-saving programs and projects. Eligible projects are life-affirming projects that reach out to and serve at-risk populations, including minorities, teenagers, and college-age women, as well as campaigns that promote adoption and suicide prevention. The purchase of a Choose Life license plate is itself a choice. No one is required to purchase a Choose Life license plate. The principle of choice is embedded in the title of this license plate as it simply states, Choose Life. A common criticism of those who oppose life-affirming choices is that we focus too much on the life of the baby and not enough on the needs of the mother. It is my hope that those who are so inclined to accept this view should be supportive of this legislation as this legislation is indeed focused on the needs of the mother. The proceeds from the license plate enabled under this legislation would help satisfy the material needs of the mother, such as diapers, gas money, or shelter, all within a loving environment that seeks what is best for the mother as well as the child in her womb. We all know that the baby in the mother's room is not the only vulnerable life that is impacted by an unwanted pregnancy. The mother is also vulnerable. Vulnerable to fear, vulnerable to financial hardships, vulnerable to a sense that they are all alone. Well, they do not need to face these challenges all alone. There are many individuals and organizations throughout our state who truly care about their well-being. Not only are they not alone, the passage of Senate Bill 163 would provide the mother, their baby, and those who look after them in love with the resources and sense of hope that they sorely need. Your vote in support of Senate Bill 163 is more than a vote for a license plate. It is a vote to support the most vulnerable in our society, which are pregnant mothers and the child within their womb. The Choose Life message is a very simple message. It's a message of love. It's love for the baby in the womb, love for the mother facing an unplanned pregnancy, love for anyone struggling with a decision to take their own life, and love for a nation founded on the principle that governments are instituted to secure our unalienable right. Uh, and these unalienable rights include that right to life. Each of us have a choice before us at this moment. It is my sincere hope that you will join me in choosing life. Thank you. Senator, any questions? <clears throat> yes, Senator Tanya. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Uh, the question that I have is the name Choose Life, uh, do you feel it, it promotes a particular religious or political viewpoint that's barred by our state constitution? Uh, no, I do not. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I kind of think it's a little bit of a sad commentary that the, the whole principle of defi uh, defending this unalienable right to life has been treated as if it's something that's only dealing with religion. <laughs> I mean, our, our Declaration of Independence was very clear. Um, that was a pretty straightforward document that defined the principles on which we were founded and included that appreciation for that unalienable right to life. And um, so, uh, you know, I, 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 I would have a tough time stretching that because a, a lot of the times when you see things on the other side of the fence, there's a lot of um, occurrences uh, on the abortion side of the fence, uh, Kermit Gosnell, for example. You don't have to be somebody of practicing you know, of faith to, to go off and understand that that was um, those were monstrous deeds that, that he um, with the late term abortion that he did with the uh, 
and he was convicted on felony counts of, of murder, essentially. Um, that's something that you don't need a religious conviction necessarily. It's a moral conviction as a human being that you understand that those actions are wrong. So um, now I think um, uh, if, if a lot of the women that were going into his clinic would have known that we had a support network such as that that's going to be promoted by these Choose Life license plate and the resources available for it, maybe they wouldn't have gone into there. Maybe they never would have been subject to um, somebody like that, like uh, Kermit Gosnell. And, and, um, and I don't think that, that um, has any religious test associated with it. Thank you, Senator. Thanks. Senator Horn. Thank you. And you know, thank you for bringing this bill again to us, uh, Senator. Um, you know, and I, and I see there, well, we have letters that, you know, that actually uh, say that this choosing life promotes religious and political viewpoints. Do you think yeah. it's possible for, you know, for, for us as a society to have a human viewpoint that, you know, that protecting a young babies uh, is, a, is an okay thing? Uh, I would like to think so. I mean, that's our primary duty as government officials is to secure the rights of the governed. And, uh, you know, I think this gets in the debate of whether or not uh, the baby in the moon, for example, is a life. Um, and uh, I think it's pretty clear from a lot of science that that is indeed a life. Um, it's a, um, so I, it's kind of an interesting little exercise right now. But, yeah, there's a humanistic perspective on all this that uh, you notice that our Declaration of Independence wasn't signed by um, a specific uh, clergy member or anything else. They were representatives of the 13 colonies in a very secular manner. Um, I'm not going to say that the whole document secular, if you will, but I think that the, when you were talking about the idea of the purpose of government to secure rights that are many of us, whether you're religious or not, uh, find um, unalienable. I think it's that's kind of gets as close to a human right as you can get. Senator Kanye. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, one thought is: uh, Do you think that a more neutral phrase could be used, perhaps "celebrate life"? Or are there any less uh, direct messages that have been considered to celebrate life, or perhaps to uh, promote pregnancy? Well, Michigan's not the only state in the nation that's used this um, expression. So um, while there are a lot of uh, options in the English language to go off and, and do this, we, we chose to adopt this for a reason, because it's common with a lot of folks. Um, and frankly, it's, it's something that highlights the fact that this really is a choice, first of all. And um, all we're trying to do is kind of uphold our responsibility as government officials to kind of promote the idea that we're supposed to be securing uh, uh, rights like the right to life. So I, I want to make sure that it's really just kind of highlighting. I, the text that's actually chose right now, I think, is pretty consistent with what we've seen in other states. Thank you, Senator. Okay. Senator, Senator a follow-up, too. Uh, and I think that last uh, term, and as this bill was up, and we had testifiers in, I'd I think it was uh, we cautioned, you know, uh, people that were testifying, including the maker of the bill, too, yeah. uh, that this is a transportation committee, uh, and if we're dealing with a license plate, uh, it's printed, it has words on it, it has emblems on it, it has symbols on it, and we have a lot of these, and, and to, you know, to, you know, to, uh, to judge these as being either political or, uh, or, or uh, religious is, you know, at this committee is probably uh, not the appropriate place to, to do that. We're just, you know, we're saying is, is there's a good thing or is it sort of not a good thing to have these yeah. particular organizations on license plates. In Detroit Lions were here, but last week in Pistons. Yeah. So, so you know, we didn't we didn't view them as being you know political or. Uh, or religious as well. So well, there is a lot of religious fervor. I mean, a lot of people are praying for the Alliance to get to the Super Bowl. So uh, you can say that they are promoting religion in that context. You know, for, for over for over 50 years, Senator. Yeah. 